let's dive into this. If you have your Bible, you can turn to the book of Romans. I'm not going to tell you where in Romans because we're going to be in a couple places in Romans, but you can just turn to the book of Romans. It's in the New Testament. Um, you're going to get past the Gospels and past the book of Acts, and you're going to see the letter that was written to the people of Rome, okay? A Greek culture that had all kinds of different gods and all kinds of different theologies and beliefs. And so you're going to find a book there where the writer is actually trying to make it plain why Christianity. Why Christianity? Now, this is, I'm going to ask you to be very honest today, as I will be very honest with you today. We're living in a culture where Christianity is being questioned a lot, all right? It's being questioned a whole lot. And for good reason. I mean, in all honesty, a organization or a belief system that structures itself on love your enemies, do good to those that persecute, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength, and your neighbor as yourself, Christians aren't always seen as the most loving, compassionate, understanding people. Can I get an amen on that? It's just the reality of it. And I get it. Some people are like, well, just because I love them don't mean I have to like them. Okay, if you figure out how to do that, can you let me know? Because like I've heard people say that and I still don't know how you do it. Right? Like, I love them. Show me. Well, I don't like them, so I don't know how to show you. Oh, then I don't believe you. But we say it because as Christians, we know that's what we're supposed to say. We, we know we're supposed to love people. And Jesus loved people. And, and so we, we struggle with some of the things. We, we struggle in Christianity. We're in this series right now to my friends that left the faith. And, and we're seeing a huge section of people leaving the faith, leaving the church, uh, not even considering the church. You're seeing a lot of atheists or agnostics or polytheists. There's something out there. I just don't believe it's this Christian model is what's out there. Or there's nothing out there. And so we, we have to understand that there are some doubts that we have in the culture that we live in. And I believe what the church has not done a good job of is just answer some of them. Is just talk about some of them. the reality of there's some stuff that we walk through as believers that isn't always easy to understand. How many of you understand Christianity? Hands up. <laughs> okay, let me ask it this way. How many of you believe Christianity? Hands up. How many of you think that's just a bit weird? That you don't understand it, but you believe it. You're like, no, Pastor Vince, I believe in electricity, but I don't know what happens once I flip that switch. I believe in oxygen, but I can't see it. So we have some of these, what I would call Sunday school type of explanations, which I'm down with. I like, I, I'm a faith guy. But the problem is, as we grow in our faith, we start to look at things, and what we start to look at causes us to have some questions. I think in Christianity, I'm going to say this out loud, and, and, and it may shock people, but I believe in Christianity, there are times that I have disappointment with accepted beliefs. What? But you're the preacher. I know. Ha accepted belief. God will work all things to the good of those who love Christ and are called according to his purpose. How many of you know that's a Bible verse? How many believe that Bible verse? But boy, how many of you struggle when that season or that circumstance in your life really causes you to question, is this going to work out to the good? Pastor Vince, I have cancer. Good? Pastor Vince... My wife just left. He's going to work that to the good? There was a death, and they were so young. He's going to work that to the good? And sometimes we fight through it and go, I'm just supposed to believe, I'm just supposed to believe, I'm just supposed to believe, which I appreciate tenacity, I do. But I also believe we as believers should be called to a deeper knowledge of Christ to try to understand. Part of it, let's just get to the nuts and bolts of it. Part of it, we won't. We just won't. I, I, lo I love God and I believe in God, 
But I also believe there's a part of the scripture that says, oh, the depth of both the wisdom and knowledge of our Lord, how unsearchable are his ways and his thoughts beyond us finding out. I love that passage. I love it from a learner's perspective because what it means is that I can dive to the very depth of God that I understand. (laughs) And, And I'm not even out of the shallow end yet to who God truly is. There is so much more there that I won't grasp. But what we don't do is we don't do a good job of walking people through it. We instead go, well, you should just believe. Well, I'm trying. I don't think you're trying. And so why does this happen? I believe it happens for a lot of different reasons. I believe we're seeing a deconstruction of faith. And while we see a deconstruction of faith, we get frustrated at God. I get frustrated at people in regards to God because I'm a pastor and I'm looking at my profession or my calling and I'm realizing that people are not stepping into it anymore. They've been convinced by the world, by the media, by whatever you want to say, whoever you want to blame. The reality is we just don't want to step into hard things. And so people go, well, there was a time I felt like God might've been calling me to preach, but then I realized the 401k is not fantastic. I might not get to take as many vacations as I'd like. Man, you guys deal with a lot of people's junk, right? We deal with all the junk. So yeah, I don't, I don't know that that's, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't know that I want to do that. And then it carries generationally where we go. I don't know that I want my kids to do that. Can I be honest with you? I don't know if I want my kids to do it. Oh, don't get me wrong. I pray daily, God, I pray that you would call my kids into ministry. I pray you'd call them into ministry. I pray one of these days down the road, there are churches started by my children because they take that faith that I've tried to live out in front of them. I pray that. But there are days where I'm like, I wouldn't wish this on anybody. Not because it's awful. Like, it's not like, I I don't... I get, I get so tickled at people today that go like, man, the persecution of the American church, that's laughable. The American church doesn't deal with persecution. We deal with people telling us they don't like us because of what we believe. Other areas of the world are dealing with death because of what they believe. And so why Christianity? If that's what we're talking about, why Christianity? And what, why would somebody choose it? So today I'm going to walk through this the best that I can. And in order to walk through it, i got to give you some false teaching that's out there. Not only in regard to Christianity, but just false teaching as in general that we as people love to embrace. How many of you know we love to embrace false teaching? Okay, our belief system is weird. Like we believe things, especially when we're younger, we believe some stuff until it gets proven wrong. I told you all last week, I think it was in this service where I told you last week, I tried to fly when I was a child. Trash bag and a 12 foot wall. I didn't even slow down, bro. I was like, all right, I know I can fly. And I jumped, landed right on my face. It's not good. Picking rocks and gravel out of my cheeks. It was awful. That's what happened. But I realized something when I hit the ground that what I believed wasn't true. Sometimes when you come face to face with what you believe isn't true, it feels like hitting the ground like that. Some of you have a belief about Christianity that isn't true. And I don't even know that you've heard these teachings or we just generally accept them but I'm going to show you how Christianity kind of bleeds into some of these other thought processes. There are four main beliefs in the world, four main, what you would call religious ideologies. You have Hinduism, which is large, Buddhism, which is large, Islam, which is large, Christianity, which is large, right? Christianity for a long time was making strides to becoming the largest belief system. Uh, Islam has rapidly taken over that. Um, And it is the fastest growing of all the religions. Interestingly enough, Buddhism is actually a church split off Hinduism. They did it before the Baptists did. (laughs) And so those are kind of similar in their ideologies. But I want want to just talk to you about some thoughts. The first thought I want to talk to you about is what's the fact, it's called the scale doctrine. 
And the scale doctrine is something we're all very aware of. In fact, most of us really love the scale doctrine, but we've Christianized it a little bit. The scale doctrine is this. So long as I do more good things than bad things, then I'm all right. Anybody know what I'm talking about? These are the good people people. Boy, they're a good person. I don't know if they know Jesus, but man, they're good people. You know, they're just good people. And so we start to kind of buy into that because we know some people that are good people, right? How many of you know people that are good people that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Let me ask you this. How many of you know good people and you don't know whether or not they know Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior because they're good people you haven't asked? And so this good people doctrine, this good things versus bad thing doctrine is really awful, but it also has some roots. You see this in, in Hinduism. You see this in Buddhism. Hinduism says, basically, if I do enough good stuff, when I come back in my reincarnation, I could be a good thing. So like you can do enough good stuff that when you come back, you could be a prince. But if you don't do enough good stuff, you could come back as a rat. Now, I don't, know why they, I don't know why I picked rat. I don't have anything against rats. All right? I, I'm neutral on rats. <laughs> Obviously, they were created for a purpose. I don't understand that purpose, but they were created for it. And so here's the thing. We have this, this ladder that we have in our mind. And I'm just going to tell you, I don't care who you are, you have a spiritual ladder in your mind. And you have probably at seasons in your life exhausted yourself climbing the spiritual ladder. And so whether it's this Hinduism, whether it's Buddhism, whether it's, it's I'm going to make sure that I do enough good things so that when I get to the end of it, oh, man, I didn't do that. I did a bad thing. So I got to come back down and start over. I had a thought in my head and and I didn't, I don't, you know, when you have those bad thoughts, they're just as bad, right? And so we, we have this scale mentality. So long as I do good stuff, I climb the ladder. Bad stuff it brings me back down the ladder. So in essence, it takes our entire life to get to the top of the ladder. Because how many of you do some good stuff? Say amen. How many of you do some bad stuff? Say amen. That's awful, right? Not, I'm not saying you're awful because you do bad stuff. I'm saying that's awful that that's the kind of deal we got to work through is, man, I did some good stuff today, but then I got mad on the drive home. <sighs> Carried groceries out for the lady at the store, slammed my finger in her door and cussed all the way to my car. <sighs> Here's the part that's crazy to me in reincarnation. It's the idea of reincarnation is climb the ladder well enough and you come back as something good. But you know where you start when you come back? At the bottom of the ladder again. You have to do it all over again. So if I'm a person, just a regular old person, and I've just spent my life busting my tail to do the good stuff to get to the top of the ladder, and man, I made it. Woo! Finally made it. Your reward to go back to the bottom of the ladder and do it as someone different. That sucks. <laughs> I'd really like to come back as somebody different. I always get tickled at people because when people do believe in reincarnation, they always believe that they get to pick what they come back as. That's not what that doctrine teaches at all. It's based on how good or bad you did. It's based on the ladder. Well, where does Christianity come against this? Well, here's the problem. So Christianity comes in in the book of, the Rome, in the book of Romans and says, well, um, chapter 3, verse 23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned, all have sinned. So that means about the time you climb the ladder, you just have to get back off the ladder. Why? Because I'm, I'm going to sin. I'm actually starting as a sinner. Okay, yeah, but I mean, I got some sin, but I'm still good. Well, let's walk through that because the Bible also says in Romans chapter 3, verse 10, for it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. So you're not even good. 
And so what Christians have done, this is my favorite thing. What Christians have done is we've taken the scale doctrine instead of making it good deeds and bad deeds, we've made it lesser bad deeds are better than the really bad deeds. <laughs> right? This is how we climb the ladder. Let's throw the list up on the wall. We climb the ladder like this as Christians. We go, man, at least I didn't murder anybody. But I had some hate. At least I didn't have an affair. But I have a porn addiction. I mean, I, I didn't insult you, David, right to your face. Right? That would be bad. Like, who would, who would, who would do that? Like, there's no way I'm just going to walk right up to you and insult you. Now, what I will do is I'll walk right up to Candace and insult you. Right? We, no. Surely y'all wouldn't do that. Right? You, you, wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't walk up to somebody and just shred them. But we'll kind of talk to somebody else about them. Right? So we, we, we believe the, the lesser bad deed is better than the really bad deed. Like, I, I mean, I, I didn't actually have an affair. Well, yes, you did. According to the New Testament, you did. Maybe not according to the Old Testament, but according to the New Testament, you did. I've said this for as long as I've preached. Everybody goes, New Testament grace, New Testament grace. Everybody loves the grace in the New Testament. What you miss in the New Testament is that God took the standard and wound it up. He like turned it to 11. Because in the Old Testament, no other gods before me. That's a good one, right? That's a big one. Thou shalt not take the Lord thy God's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and mother so that thy days on the earth might be long. So far we're good, doing good. Thou shalt not kill. Check. I hadn't killed anybody yet. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Check. Haven't done that yet. Thou shalt not lie. Well, you mean big lies, right? mean like big ones, like, ob like obvious lies, <laughs> like obvious lies. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Cause there are some lies that you feel obligated to tell. Like how many of you know, let's just go ahead and sit. Let's just go there. Everybody promised to be authentic and holy this morning. As we talk about this, some babies are ugly. I said it. I think this is going live tonight at six o'clock. So somebody, uh, somebody's going to be like, Pastor Vince, all babies are precious in the sight of the Lord. That's not what I said. I just said some of them ugly. <laughs> now, all together, am I wrong? No. Would you ever say it? No. No. <laughs> no. Let me teach you a preacher trick. Because we get put in that position. Pastor Benson, I just want you to see our little baby. And you go. Mm. <laughs> Woo! That, that is a baby. <laughs> look, at, look at that baby. Boy. Right? <laughs> yeah. That is, a, that is some kind of baby God blessed you with. <laughs> It's interesting. We'll repent of the bad stuff. We'll repent of the really bad stuff. Bold faced lie, like if I just I just got how many of you know that most of the time we confess to a lie is when we get caught in the lie? Come on, church. Otherwise, why would you bring it up again? Right? Very few people are telling a lie and then like at the end of the day going, you know what? Earlier today, I just straight up lied to your face and think I should come clean about it. No, most of us are like, I don't need to do that again. That was a bad idea. We're going to let this one slide. How many of you do this? Lord, Lord, I know I should repent. How many of you know you should repent of your sins? Say amen. amen. So how many of you are doing this? Lord, I'm coming to you today because I lied on my tax return. I know, God, I know. 
I know the mailman is not actually a dependent of my home, but he's there every day. And so I just felt like it made sense because he's at my house every day and he's dependent on a place to put the mail and that's my mailbox. So Lord, I put him on there as an additional dependent. None of you are praying that prayer. You're just hoping you get by. You're just hoping you make it. And so as Christians, what we do is we take the scale doctrine and we justify it by not talking about how good we are, but talking about how not bad we are. Well, at least I'm not. We do this weird comparison Christianity where we believe that because my sin doesn't rank on a sheriff's department list, that it's not as bad. When in the New Testament, he ramped it up. He said, if you look at a woman with lust, if you look at a man with lust, you've had the affair. No, no, that can't. Don't come at me. Jesus said it. If you look at a person with hate, you've already murdered them. You've murdered them. No, I haven't killed anybody. Turn it up. If you want the great grace of God, you have to understand there's great weight that comes with it. So your life should look different. So we have this and we go, well, but, but Vince, why, why do we do that? Because it's easier to believe that way than to believe the actual way. And we'll get to the actual way in a second. So we start believing this doctrine, this bad teaching that says, so long as I do the right thing, so long as I do enough. And then we go to the other ones where you have this idea of denial and people, we're seeing this one more and more and more and more. Well, there is no God, there is no heaven, there is no hell. It's complete denial of it all. But even in what would be considered one of the core beliefs or core doctrines that teaches that Buddhism is that you reach this place of enlightenment and that there's, this is really all illusionary. Our life, your life is an illusion. I was like, how can I illustrate that? And I was going to have you pinch the person next to you, but don't do that. And so as we believe this, but here's the thing, you think about this guy that originally had this idea from Buddhism. Now he was part of the Hindu tradition but he wasn't satisfied with it. He still kept struggling with things. And when you struggle with things, you question things. And so he was having a deconstruction of faith from Hinduism. And there he sat under a Bodhi tree. And as he's sitting under this Bodhi tree, he has this vision of what's called the four noble truths. And these four noble truths basically break down is to all of life is an illusion. All of life is struggle. All struggle is caused by craving. And the fourth one is that you can finally find a path where there is no struggle and there is no craving. That's the goal. And interestingly enough, when you get to the fourth noble truth, then you have to step into the eightfold pathway. And I'm like, if this thing keeps doubling, I'm out of luck because math is not my strong suit. And then the reality is they don't believe there's anything up there, but yet in the eight path or the eightfold pathway to these four noble truths or to higher enlightenment, it's still a list of what you have to do. So I'm, a, I'm sitting here going, okay, I know that I don't believe in God, but I want to be enlightened. So how do I become enlightened? Right speech, right action, right, right viewpoint, right intentions, the right livelihood, the right effort, the right mindfulness, the right con How many? That sounds a lot like a ladder, doesn't it? The problem is you climb this ladder and go, okay, I have the right viewpoint. Oh, I have the right mindset. Oh, I have the right speech. Wait, I think I have the right speech. Wait, who sets the standard for what is the right speech? Oh, wait, there's nothing up there. there. There's nothing that sets the standard. So, I mean, must, maybe I set the standard. Because if I'm going to be enlightened, maybe I set the standard. That's right. I'm the one that sets the standard. Oh, wait, that sounds like pride. Dang it, that's the wrong mindset. And we have to come back down the ladder. Because if there's not a standard, and I'm the one that's responsible for deciding what all of those are, how many of you, this looks different for everybody in the room? It does for me. My mindset's going to be different than your mindset. My speech is going to be different than your speech. Those things are going to happen. And what, who sets the standard? 
Well, n nobody, because it doesn't exist. Your goal is enlightenment. Your goal is enlightenment. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend my entire life doing my best to climb this ladder to get up here and go, I made it! To what? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. We, it's, it's, just, it's broadly described as enlightenment. You've reached it. There's no more struggle. There's no more craving in your life. And this is it. This is it. You say, Vince, well, maybe, what, what about those people that don't believe there's a heaven, don't believe there's a hell, don't believe? I believe in the Bible. I believe that every part of it's true, every word of it's true. I'm not saying you believe that. I'm saying that I believe that. When I look at the Bible and I go, okay, God, what about those things? What about this idea that people say there is no God? And the Bible says this in a couple places. It's as if God is dropping these things in Scripture to help us out. It says this in Psalms. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. The heavens declare. The skies declare. Not the preacher. Creation itself, Romans chapter 1, verse 20, for his invisible attributes, namely his power and his divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. Regardless of the teaching, we find ourselves still fighting with the ladder. We still, I want to figure out the ladder. I got to figure out the ladder because that's how we do things. It's about how high I get on. That's how people know whether I'm good or bad. Why? Because I did good stuff, so I'm on the ladder. As long as people keep seeing me do good stuff, then it's good. Well, then the problem is, is why did you do good stuff? Well, so people would see me do good stuff. That's called pride, so that's not a good thing. Well, how, why am I supposed to do good things? Well, because the Spirit of God in you compels you to do the things that God would do. And so we... We climb not because we have to. You say, no, no, we have to climb the ladder. That's the only thing I've ever known. It's the only thing I've ever been taught is that I got to climb the ladder. I got to keep climbing the ladder. Success, award, achievement. That's what I got to do. I got to climb the ladder. I got to climb the ladder. So why do people choose Christianity if that sounds just like everything else? Why do they choose Christianity if it's still climbing the ladder? Because this is exhausting, climbing the ladder. Can we just admit that together? It's exhausting climbing the ladder. Well, Pastor Vince, Christians don't climb the ladder. Yes, we do. You, some of you do it every Sunday. Because you'll say things to me after service. You'll be like, whew, Pastor Vince, you were talking right to me today. Then why didn't you do anything about it? Why didn't you move when God told you to move? Well, because in my mind, I was going, I might have to fix some stuff before I take a step forward. Or man, I don't know, with my past, I don't know if God will can't even accept me, so I don't even think I can climb the ladder. So instead, you compliment the speaker, but you deny the source. Somebody should write that down. I didn't write that down. But that's exactly what we do. We, we compliment the action, but we're in denial that it's a God that's call, he's calling us forward. And what happens? We fall back and we go, love your enemies. I can't even step on the rung of the ladder. Pastor Vince, I can't. Love your enemies? Do you know what they did? I'm still kind of mad at you about the enemy thing. How do you see that coming? They blindsided me. They had the affair. They left me alone. You want me to forgive them and climb? Ah, no. Forget your past. Allow God to forgive your past. I want to, but man, God, my past is it's pretty legit. There's some rough stuff back there. There's some things that I don't want to talk about anymore. I don't want to bring them up anymore. I don't want anybody to talk about them anymore. So I don't know that I can just confess them to you. And then if you, you're either on the guilt side of your past or you're on the ticked off side of your past. God, if you'd have given me a better home structure, I wouldn't have dealt with all that stuff. It wouldn't have made me so angry. God, if you'd have done that, if you'd have been there, like you said, remember what I said, we get disappointed in accepted beliefs. All things work together for the good. 
while my dad was beating my mom and I'm hiding in a closet? Not good, God, and I don't think I want to climb the ladder. I don't want to climb the ladder. I can't climb the ladder. I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to do something good. I'm going to preach a sermon, and then I'm going to go to a restaurant. They're going to make me wait an hour and a half to get a hamburger when I could have just went home and made the hamburger. And so now i got to come back down the stinking ladder because I'm angry. This is dumb. I don't want to climb the ladder anymore. You see why people get disillusioned with faith? You see why all of us have these moments or these seasons in our life where we struggle and we go, what am I supposed to do? Well, here's the beautiful thing. All these other religions that say, hey, you got to do enough things and you start climbing the ladder and you're like, okay, I'm kind of climbing the ladder and I'm going to make it. Praise God, I'm going to make it. And you get to the top of the ladder and in one belief, you find enlightenment, whatever that means, no one knows. Or you find that you got to start all over because you did good enough to have to do it again. And then God does something unique. Take a breath. <laughs> God looks at his father. Jesus looks at his father and says, they can't climb the ladder. So what do you want to do? They can't climb the ladder. They're trying. They keep messing it up. They keep, they, they keep getting in their own way. So what do you want to do? I can't, make them, I can't keep making them climb the ladder. So what do you want to do? I'm going to go down the ladder. Instead of putting them through the hell in a life that says you got to do it right. You got to do it right. You got to do it right. And I just want God to see me for doing it right, for working hard. I'm trying, God, I'm trying, God, I'm trying. You'll never make it up the ladder. So Jesus did what no other religion did. He came down for you so that you didn't have to fight with the ladder. You didn't have to struggle with the ladder. You didn't have to, yeah, but Vince, I, I still feel guilty. That ain't God. That's the false teaching. That's the bad teaching that you've got. That God's waiting in heaven to smack you on the wrist every time you mess it up. Let me set you free. You're gonna mess it up. You have a sin nature and thanks be to God. I'm not the one that has to climb the ladder. Because just about the time I would think I could take the first step, my pride would eliminate me from the first step. But Jesus came down and hung on a cross and saw you in the midst of your struggle with the ladder and saw you in the midst of your struggle with sin and saw you in the ditch and saw you in the midst of your worst possible sin. Please don't get this idea that God looked from the cross and saw you worshiping on a Sunday morning. No, he saw you in the pit. He saw you in the mud and the blood of it. And still said, forgive them. They don't know. They don't know. So about the time I climbed the ladder, come here, Joe, hurry up, come here. I didn't do this in the first service, so I got to hurry. Joe's wrestling, climbing the ladder, and he's pacing back and forth because he doesn't know how to climb the ladder. And God's at the top of the ladder, seeing whom he'll accept. And yep, if Joe starts to go up the ladder, God's going to go, hold on, bro, you can't go up the ladder. Come back down the ladder. But since Jesus came down the ladder, Jesus said, Joe, hold on right here. Come on. So now when God looks down the ladder, he don't see Joe. He sees his son. And that gives Joe access. That gets him in. That's the victory. You mean I didn't have to do anything? You mean I had to climb the ladder? He already climbed the ladder. He already paid the price. So what do I have to do? 
accept, believe, confess. I wish I, man, I have tried to make this more complicated, Joe. I have, I've tried to make it more complicated. And he says, no, if you accept that Jesus Christ is the son of God and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you confess that you're a sinner in need of a savior, you shall be saved. What does that mean? It means the ladder wasn't in vain. I came down on your behalf to get you. I want you to bow with me, church. Listen, I'm going to get very real and very direct with a lot of you. Some of you have been doing church for a long time and your view or your idea of doing the church is trying to climb the ladder. You're trying to do it right, make it right, trying to get everything right, trying to get it just perfect, trying to make sure that you, your scale works out, that you do better, more, more better stuff than you do bad stuff. And if I can just get that scale to work out, and I'm telling you, throw the scale in the trash. He came down the ladder. He came down for you. It's why we call it the grace of God. We didn't deserve him coming down, and yet he did. He saw you in the midst of your confusion about climbing and not climbing. What do I do? What do I not do? And he said, I'm going down to get them. Why? Because I love them. And they don't know how to walk through this. They don't know how to let go of, of anger. They don't know how to forgive. They don't know how. And so I've got to go get them. 